So in this video, we're going to be talking about adding multi-user video chat to your Rails application. Now we're gonna be using an API that I've got pulled up here called Vonage. It used to be known as TalkBox, and this is the backend services for your WebRTC video chats. Now we're using this instead of just WebRTC directly because we can have recordings built in automatically using their API, and we can do other things like um, webinar broadcast. So if we want to broadcast a video from our computer to a thousand viewers, we can do that using their API and it helps uh, traverse things like firewalls and stuff like that. So this is going to be a lot easier to use for more complex video uh, setups than trying to build that all yourself with WebRTC. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, first off, you're going to need to create a Voniger TalkBox account and we are going to um, create a project. So we're gonna create one using the OpenTalk API, a custom project. You can also use their video chat embeds, which are really simple, and just add a simple video chat widget um, into your application. But we wanna do a custom project, and we'll call this Go Rails example. And we want our preferred codec to be VP8. Uh, they support H.264, which is kind of the preferred one, but VP8 is more compatible across all browsers. And that's the one you probably want to use. So we're gonna use uh, that, hit create, and that will create our project here and give us an API key and a secret. We're gonna copy those keys and then run Rails credentials, colon edit, um, dash dash environment, equals development and open up our Rails credentials and paste them in here. So we're gonna say Vonage API key, paste that in and Vonage API secret and paste in our other key. So once we're done, um, our credentials will be encrypted and saved and we can go on to add the open talk um, gem to our gem file that's gonna allow us to talk to our API using those API keys and secrets we just created. And then we're going to generate a scaffold for a model, like a room or a meeting or whatever you want to call your video chats. Um, so we're gonna need a name for those to describe that. And um, we also need a Vonage session ID. This is going to be the ID of the Vonage session. So anybody who's chatting in this room will connect using the Vonage session ID, and that will be used uh, for Vonage to keep track of the different video chats so that they can be routed uh, accordingly so that you can have two different video chat rooms going on at the exact same time. So we'll run this and run Rails DB migrate. So once our migrations are run, we can go into our application code and open up our room model that we just created. And before we create this in our database, after validations have passed, um, we want to go and create a session ID. So we want to instantiate that open talk, open talk um, API. And we can do that using open talk, open talk .new and say rails.application.credentials.vonage API key and rails.application.credentials.vonage API secret. I'm assuming that OpenTalk will be renamed to Vonage at some point, um, so you can rename that later on if you're watching this and they've renamed the gem. Um, but for now, it is still OpenTalk. So this gives us a client that we can use to create a session ID um, in our database and then save that to self.vonage session ID in our um, model before it saves. So it will actually save with that. So the way that this works is we can call opentalk.create session to receive a session object and then we can call session dot session ID and assign that to our database. And that will be our ID for the uh, Vonage or OpenTalk session. Um, that is the key that we need to differentiate the rooms. And so we have that saved as a unique ID on the room. So with that said, we can now go into our rooms controller. And it's best if we have a before action to authenticate 
user here so that uh, we have a user logged in when we go and view that room. And when we are viewing the room, we need to generate a token for the user to access that room. So we're gonna generate a token here in the controller, install that in our view in a data attribute, and then tell our JavaScript to look for that token so that it can authenticate to the session. So our server needs to generate a token to tell OpenTalk's um, JavaScript API that it's allowed to stream that user's video. So here we want to create a new client just like we did in our model and we want to create a token. So we'll say opentalk.generate token. We'll have the room session ID, which is the unique ID we just generated for the room. And we can pass in some options here and we'll say current user.name and that will be assigned to the user as they join the room. So it'll show their name over top of the video. Um, so with that said, we can go to our room show HTML.erb and start setting up our client side. So first things first, we need to go to our head tag and we want to paste in uh, the JavaScript tag for OpenTalk. So this is the uh, URL for that. So we'll paste that in so we can reference the OpenTalk API in our JavaScript. And then we want to uh, basically create an area on our room's show page so that we can embed those videos. So then in our show page, we can go and add a div here at the bottom. And I just removed the room session ID because we don't need to display that. Um, we can add a, a stimulus controller here. So we'll say data controller is Vonage. We want data token equals the at token variable we just created in the controller. And then we want our um, API key here. Um, and we I can say data vonage token, data vonage API key, and we'll print out rails.application.credentials.vonage API key. And then we need the vonage session ID as well. So we'll say at room dot session ID. And let's go and order those a bit differently. And then we can go wire up our stimulus controller. So let's run Rails Webpacker install stimulus to make sure that stimulus support is added. And then inside of our app JavaScript um, folder, we will have a new controllers folder and we can rename hello controller to Vonage controller vonage controller.js and in a here is where we're going to set up everything. So we need to instantiate um, the video chat and we need to subscribe to new users who join the chat room so we can insert their videos onto the page as well. So of course, once the stimulus controller connects, we need to grab those data attributes that we just defined. So we're gonna say this.api key equals this.data.get API key, we want the session ID. So we're gonna say this.data.get session ID and we need that token. So this.token equals this.data.get token. Then we can initialize our session and we're gonna define a method for that. Initialize session. And this is going to be where we actually talk to OpenTalk. So we're gonna be referencing a uh, variable called OT, which will stand for OpenTalk. Um, this will probably change as well in the future when they rename that to Vonage, but I'm sure it's easier said than done when they're renaming API and library things. Um, so for now, we're gonna be using OT. Now, because we inserted that JavaScript tag, we have access to this variable and we don't have to import it through an NPM package, but you could use an NPM package and import that uh, like we do from stimulus up here for the controller. So uh, because we don't have to do that, we can move right into an init session. And this method takes this.api key and this.session ID and that's gonna give us our session. Now, uh, the first thing we want to do is say this.session on stream created, we want to call a stream created method that we define on this object. So we're gonna bind this so we can keep that 
um, context. And so we'll say stream created. And this is going to give us an event. And in here, we're going to say this.session.subscribe to event.stream. We want this.element. So wherever we've uh, mounted this stimulus controller to, we're going to insert the video onto that element. And we're going to have insert mode append. So we'll just append it to the end. Our width here will be 100%. Our height will be 100%. And um, this dot handle error uh, dot bind this. So we'll have a handle error method down here, which will take an error and say if there was an error, then we want a console.log error.message. Um, and I believe we can also say console.error um, to make that even a bit more important in the logs. And so what that's going to do is basically uh, insert video for every user who joins that room. But in order for a user to actually join the room, we need to create them as a publisher. So we're going to say this.publisher equals ot.init publisher. This.element insert mode uh, prepend. And that's going to insert our video for us as a publisher, um, publishing our video into the session. We're going to prepend that at the beginning. We always want our face to be at the beginning so we can find ourselves pretty easily. And this is going to be the same thing. Width is 100%. Height is 100%. And our name for our user, um, we could grab this from uh, name in our uh, HTML. So if we went to room show.html erb, we can add data vonage name equals current user dot name and just display the user's name there. Now we also have to, this is a promise, so we have to define a handle error uh, method bind this and that should get us uh, where we need to be. So um, that's going to create our publisher. And then last is we want this.session.connect using this.token and this stream connected bind this. So we're going to have a stream connected uh, method that will take an error. And if there was an error, we want to console, or actually let's just do this.handle error, pass in the error, and otherwise we want this.session.publish, this publisher, this handle error, bind this. And basically we're going to uh, initialize our session our publisher, and then we're going to try to connect to the stream. And if it's successful, then we're going to publish our um, video to that stream. So there's quite a bit of stuff going on here, as you can tell. But um, what this is going to do is basically publish our video to the stream and then receive the video from everybody else as uh, they connect. So we'll be able to have multiple users join in and they will just be appended to the UI. And you can use CSS grid and whatever else you might like to lay out your um, videos on your page. Now let's go to our room show one more time and let's add an ID here of videos um, to our div. That way we can go into our assets and paste in um, some style sheets. So let's paste these into say just application SCSS here at the bottom, videos we want to display as a grid. We want them to be three columns with one rem gap between them. And our video height for OT videos will be uh, 240 pixels. Now before we move on, I made a typo here. We want Vonage session ID on our room because that matches the um, attribute we added. And if we go to our room.rb, you'll see that we're setting it as Vonage session ID correctly here. 
So you probably caught that um, even though I missed it. And we also want to make sure we have Vonage Session ID here in the view as well um, so that that matches too. Now the last tweak that I want to make is that I used prepend here but I'm going to do append um, here so that it inserts correctly into our element um, because we're using data grid stuff. Um, but there are other insert mo modes that you can use to insert it differently in the page, however you need it to display. Um, sometimes people do like a big video and then, you know, overlay your video um, position absolute on top of the other one. Um, so it's entirely up to you how you want to have the insert modes and widths and heights set up. Last but not least, we should be responsible JavaScript developers and say if this dot session is present, um, then this dot session dot disconnect whenever stimulus disconnects on the page. So that's going to make sure that we tear down the video streams and everything and disconnect from open talk in our browser whenever stimulus disconnects when you navigate to another page that doesn't have a video stream on it. So that is all you need to do to disconnect. So now you can see that if we open up our room page, um, this will run through all the JavaScript. And I've connected in incognito mode a different user to the same room and uh, our videos are being streamed here. Because I'm sharing that same camera there, it's going to be the exact same video in both of those streams. But we can even go into Safari and open up our room slash one and allow our camera and microphone. And I'm going to hit mute real fast. But there you go, and that one, that video from Safari is actually loading from my MacBook's webcam. So we have different video, and actually three videos, um, streams, streaming to OpenTalk and back to the browser, so that we can even record this video if we wanted. So that's pretty fascinating and really cool. So it's not a whole lot to add video chat with multiple users to your Rails application. It's a lot easier to use something like OpenTalk or Vonage um, or Twilio's API to pull this off than to build it yourself. So there's a bunch more tweaks you'll probably want to make to this to make it uh, more interactive or you know move people around and things like that. Whoever's talking, you might want to emphasize them. Um, there's tons of other features you could add to this to build something more like Zoom. But for the foundations of this, it's actually extremely simple. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you guys in the next one.